Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you for taking the time out to join us uh, for this webinar session today. My name is Tali Adini, and I work in the commercial strategy team at Mixed Africa, and I'll be the host today. Um, I also have today some of my colleagues, um, especially uh, Mr. Deji Ali, the CEO of Mixed Africa, uh, Mrs. Rolake Akikube Filani, the Chief Commercial Officer, as well as Andrea Cameron Cole, the Head of Sales. As you might be aware, Mixed Africa is currently in London, and we have a series of events um, scheduled for next week to give you an opportunity to connect with us and learn about some of the exciting opportunities we have for you. So please, if you're in London, please feel free to stop by um, for at least one of the events and um, we'd love to meet you. So during the course, um, during the course of the session, I'll be posting um, a series of links, the links to the R to RSVP for any of the events, as well as um, to register for some of the opportunities we're going to be discussing about today. Without taking too much of your time, um, the agenda for today would include uh, the company uh, presentation, which is gonna be given by uh, Rolake, the Chief Commercial um, Officer. Um, there'll be a, present, a short um, presentation by the head of sales, Andrea. Um, then we'll go into a series, um, a, a Q&A session. Um, so please, um, the protocol for the Q&A session will be um, to enter any question you'd like to ask us via the Q&A channel, which you can find at the bottom of your screens. And your questions will be answered um, by a representative from the um, management team. Then we'll have a closing remark by our CEO, uh, Mr. Deji Ali. So um, I'll now be handing over to Rolake um, to commence this session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tadi. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to this presentation. I'm going to take you through about 10 to 12 minutes uh, talking to you about our company, what we've been doing, and what new products and services we're going to be offering our clients and target market. So Mixta Africa is a Pan-African real estate company. We are in the business of creating affordable housing and innovative solutions across the continent. Founded in 2005, uh, we're a subsidiary of asset and resource management company, ARM, one of Nigeria's actually Nigeria's largest independent non-bank financial institution with over $3.5 billion in assets under management and headquartered in Lagos. Over the years we've been in operation, we've delivered more than 13,000 housing units across the countries of Africa that we are operating. We have 20 years of accumulated experience in infrastructure and real estate development, and we have a land bank of more than 15 million square meters. This is a pictorial representation of our geographical presence. We have operating subsidiaries in five countries, but we have project experience across eight countries in total. Nigeria, of course, being our biggest market. We are a company with a very strong and progressive vision. Uh, first, we believe excellence in product delivery is absolutely key. Uh, we also thrive on strong relationships and a strong network, both locally, regionally, and overseas. We thrive on continuous learning and constant improvement, and of course, innovative solutions. Uh, as part of a broader digital transformation strategy. So we're gonna spend some time just giving you some perspectives on the real estate market overview, starting with the Nigerian context. Um, as we all know too well, Nigeria, like many other countries on the continent and overseas, have come through a period of economic slowdown. And in some cases, some countries a slump and recession. Uh, but there is some light at the end of the tunnel. GDP actually grew by 5% in real terms in the second quarter of 2021. Um, and this marked three consecutive quarters of growth following negative growth recorded in the second and third quarters of 2020 at the height of the lockdown. Um, I think this is positive for the country, even though we've seen a slump in foreign investment, which actually fell by 54%, but I think part of that may be attributed to just uh, moderated investor sentiment, particularly following the economic headwinds from the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, 
we also see that the predictions uh, by the IMF for GDP growth in Nigeria are actually much more optimistic than they've been. But I, I think it's safe to say that we're well on the path and the trajectory to a recovery in our growth rates. Um, some of the other macroeconomic highlights are inflation, which dropped uh, in the month of July for the fourth consecutive month. Um, although uh, prices themselves continue to rise, but at a much slower rate than earlier in the year. Um, unfortunately, we know that unemployment is still a major challenge for the Nigerian economy. Uh, we have one of the highest rates in the world at 33.3%. Interestingly, diaspora rem remittances rose by 5% quarter on quarter, so about 4.3 billion in the first quarter of this year. This is, of course, music to our ears, seeing as we're, we're launching and refreshing our diaspora campaign and strategy. As I had mentioned, the International Monetary Fund has revised upward its growth forecast for Nigeria to 2.5% from an earlier 1.5%, which it announced at the start of this year. I think there are several factors responsible for that. Uh, the pickup again in global oil prices, we've seen Brent crude oil prices rise to close to $79 a barrel um, in, the, in the past week, actually. However, it, it's worth saying that the Naira continues to be a source of of consternation for so many people, uh, giving some of the instability and currency volatility that we're seeing. It struggled to maintain some of those gains. Uh, one of the factors that have, have driven that is the CBN policy, Central Bank of Nigeria's decision to suspend sales of foreign currency to BDC, Bureau de Change Operators in the country. Uh, the central bank for its part has maintained interest rates at 11.5% pretty much since September last year. And I think we don't see any significant departure from that, given that it really wants to boost both consumer sentiment and general economic uh, activity in, in the coming months. So we expect that NPR policy stance to pretty much stay the same in the near term. Looking at the real estate sector in terms of its economic contributions, in the past three quarters, we've actually seen significant improvement in the real estate industry. We've recorded positive growth within the sector, uh, particularly since it entered recession in Q3 2020. And it's, it's worth mentioning that part of that may be as a result of some of the, the slump in demand, particularly for commercial real estate. Um, and as of Q2 this year, uh, we saw real estate GDP um, rise to 3.85% from 1.77% in Q1. So really the market is picking up. Um, and despite some of the uncertainties we see, uh, we see that particularly the residential sub asset class remains very vibrant and very strong. And, and particularly in the tier one and tier two cities across Nigeria, namely places like Lagos, Ibadan and Abuja, I think demand for real estate still remains very, very resilient during and, and post COVID. Um, the construction sector uh, also grew uh, in the last quarter under consideration, 3.7% in Q2 2021 from a low of 1.4%. Uh, in Q1 last year. And if you actually look at Q2 in 2020, we saw minus 31%. It, it's fair to say that the construction industry, which is a key part of our value chain um, as a developer was obviously severely impacted, but we are seeing recovery on the horizon. Um, and of course, as part of that recovery, we're seeing that there's been rising price of the cost of building and building materials such as cement and iron ore, and that has gone up by 60%. And, and of course, this is a problem that will affect pretty much every market player in the real estate business. Um, and you then combine the twin impact of some of the FX volatility we see. Um, I think it's safe to say that the construction sector uh, will probably need to recover significantly much faster than we've seen in previous quarters. In terms of just some general market trends in real estate in Nigeria, Lagos um, has brought down the costs and waiting times for construction permits, which is a, a, a good thing for contract dispute resolution. We've also seen some developments in other parts of the country, such as the repeal of a legislation excluding women from inheriting property 
in, in the Southeast. Uh, residential landlords generally have increased rents for tenancies. Um, um, and that's something that, of course, the Lagos state government continues to appeal and battle. But of course, the private sector has to set market prices. But it's hoped that as we see more supply of homes coming to that market that will uh, naturally feed into the competition and keeps keep rents at an affordable uh, level for, for specific market segments. Um, I think land prices continue to remain resilient across Nigeria, particularly in the key commercial hubs and economic uh, hubs in the country. Uh, we're also seeing some broader moves at a national level for investment in infrastructure as a whole. Infraco, for instance, is a public-private partnership that was set up to help plug some of the infrastructure deficit that we know continues to eat away at macroeconomic growth in the country. The federal government itself is planning continued construction of affordable housing across local governments, which again might have an impact in, on demand for land. I, I think it's fair to say actually in the Nigerian market that land value appreciation is a feature of the market that has remained with us for a long time and will continue to do so. Um, and of course, compared with other asset classes, the residential real estate market in Lagos, Ibadan, and Abuja remain extremely resilient. And we don't expect that to change significantly in the coming months. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the opportunities that we have as a developer in the market. And I'm gonna start first by playing a video for you all. Apologies for that. I've just been told that there's no sound. <laughs> so I'm going to have to do that again. Leading real estate and infrastructure developer. Africa is one of Africa's leading real estate and infrastructure developers. We're in the business of building communities and transforming African cities through our real estate and affordable housing projects. What is it that is the bedrock, really, of, of communities? Um, it's the infrastructure. It's the civil infrastructure. It's the roads. It's the power. It's the sewage. It's the waste. And it's also the water. If you think about our slogan of building communities, it is really about creating a lifestyle uh, that people can relate to. And how we do that is we develop cities that have the full spectrum of infrastructure, amenities, that allow you to leave work and play in the city that you live in. Lagos New Town is a new community that we're building. We're lucky at the expressway. Upon completion, it's meant to have the population of over 200,000 people. It's a development which we started about 10 years ago. In that period, we've made a lot of investments, we built new communities, but it's still a work in progress. So you Ask the question why do we believe Lagos needs a new town, so to speak? Um, I think not many people realize uh, the extent of the challenge that we have in the city of Lagos. Uh, if you look at the last 60 years or so, uh, the population of the city has grown by over 2,000 percent. By comparison, you could look at the city of London, 
with a population of about 8 million people in 1960. And you'll be shocked to note that today, the city of London still has a population under 10 million people. Uh, compare that to Lagos in 1960, less than 1 million people. And today we have 20 million people living uh, in the city. Uh, and it's clear that the government hasn't been able to spend enough money to provide the infrastructure for that population growth. Uh, and I think for us, we, we've taken all of this on board. We think that uh, new communities are required. Uh, at the center of that is the need to provide infrastructure to make such communities function the way existing places, uh, communities do not. Uh, and for Mixer, that's really the motivation to create that new environment uh, that people find attractive, that's able to provide accommodation and business activities for the various income groups that we have in the country. Uh, so we see this as an exciting opportunity for us. Mr. Africa has created several communities within the Lagos New Town development. There's our signature affordable housing project, Beachwood Park, which is a community of more than 500 bungalows and affordable homes, which we sold out on and we're very proud of. We just recently launched phase two of that project. And of course, if you are standing on Lagos Newtown and facing the Lekki Expressway, to the top right is our Diva community. This is a community of over 200 homes surrounded by greenery, parks, open spaces, convenient for families, convenient for professionals. It is also linked together with other communities such as our Lakoe Lakes Golf and Country Estate via a road network that is second to none and strategically located between the Lagos Island as well as the Ekbe and Lakey Free Trade Zone axis. We have our new town commercial plots, which we're looking to develop into an industrial hub in the future. So we have large plots available for commercial and industrial use, mostly light industries. Um, they're gonna be involved fully service infrastructure with electricity and utilities and a concrete road network, which we're investing a huge amount of money in developing over the next few years. The development of large communities is not new to Mixta, as we have done this across several countries, including Tunisia, Senegal, Mauritania, Algeria, and Morocco. A favorite of ours is the Residence Isafia in Morocco. Isafia is a high-density, low-rise urban development in the heart of Matil, which sits on over 130,000 square meters of land. It is an affordable residential community comprising of more than 4,000 homes, commercial and recreational areas, and is home to over 17,000 residents. We're bringing a similar model to the Lagos New Town development. This is really what it's about, it's infrastructure. It's our ability to be able to give um, people um, standard and reliable infrastructure that they can use to access the communities that we develop for them. Uh, we've made investment in infrastructure, we've made investment in content, uh, we've made investment uh, in amenities there at that place. We have invested in the golf course, as you know, and we've built homes uh, for a variety of income groups in that place. Um, we continue to make that investment because they like parcel of land. What we want to achieve is that we'll give housing to about uh, 200,000 people. So it's a large investment and we plan to be there for the long haul. I believe it was William Shakespeare that said, what is a city but its people? And at Mixta Africa, we're putting our people and our consumers at the heart of the projects that we deliver. So we have something for everyone. Your young working families, your professionals, your entrepreneurs, your retirees, your high net worth individuals, or your aspirational graduate who wants to get on the housing ladder. And what is a community without an area and a green environment to live, work and play? So Lagos Newtown has something for everyone and it is a perfect choice for the smart investor and the smart consumer. Great. Africa. So you heard it. <laughs>
You heard it from some of our senior executives and myself. Lagos New Town is a prime location within Lagos. And I think when you look at it within the context of the, the developments we're doing, what we're really bringing is value to, to prime land by delivering world-class infrastructure. Um, and if you look at these very, very staggering figures, contrast Lagos and London, as the CEO had said in that video, it's, it's fair to say that Lagos over the next decade or two is going to be transformed. It can be transformed really well or really poorly. And I think many private sector developers, especially mixed to Africa, are really seeking to rewrite the narrative and change the face of urban Lagos. So we hope you'll come along with us on that journey. And speaking of that journey, uh, that's why we're doing this. And we're in London this week, introducing Mixta Vest. Home is where the return is. And this is something we truly believe. It really is our answer to Africans and Nigerians in this first phase in the diaspora who are interested in investing in real estate, sustainable communities and infrastructure on the home continent. So here are just a few of the things that we wanted to highlight to you around how you can key into some of these opportunities. Um, we've created a dedicated platform for engaging and serving the diaspora market because we recognize that there's some very specific and unique needs. One thing that we do know that is common is everybody wants to connect with home at some point in their lives. And so in order to ensure that we're able to provide a seamless buying and customer experience, Mixta Vest, our platform will really allow um, our diaspora clients and communities to tap into this. So we're going to be launching a series of international events, including some that we're doing next week in London, uh, bringing technology that will enable the home buying process and make it much more seamless. Uh, we have an exclusive and dedicated diaspora email address and a team supporting buyers. And of course, creating and delivering live and virtual tours. So you don't always have to be physically in Lagos in order to get and grasp the essence of the product that we have on offer. And you have the opportunity with Mixed Vest to buy into some of our existing projects via our standard payment plans or via consumer finance products, which we're collaborating with banks on, or to key into future projects that haven't been launched, uh, but to get the, the exclusive privilege of reserving units for, that are planned for future development and benefiting from incentives around those specific units. So there are just a couple of things I, I wanted to highlight before I sort of take you through a high level review of some of the, the homes and developments we have on offer. You know, I already talked about the connection to home and I think this is really an emotional connection. Everybody wants a piece of home. Everybody wants to stay connected, no matter how far and wide you've traveled. I myself spent 19 years in the UK and returned to Nigeria. I've had my own piece and taste of home for the last seven years. And even if I decided to stay behind, I would still have wanted to stay connected to home. And for some people investing in property, as, as a store of value is just that. And then there's value retention and appreciation. The products and the projects that Mixta delivers are projects that will be sustainable for years to come. Uh, sustainability in terms of being passed down to generation, but sustainability as a store of wealth and value. Of course, we know that gated communities are the future in cities like Lagos and across Africa. And that really helps to create markets uh, for, for rental markets, for secondary transactions. And those are things that I, I believe our consumers can benefit from, from investing in mixed up properties. And of course, rental income, it goes without saying, especially if you're in the diaspora, that you may be buying your home for family members or you may be buying it as an investment proposition. And there are really strong rental income prospects in many parts of the residential market. And of course, as a retirement home for those who want to spend their twilight years back home. So, some things to consider, obviously, when investing in property in, in Nigeria and across the continent. Research, conducting market assessments and due diligence on developers and their projects. This is very important because the market is awash with, and it's a highly fragmented market with lots of players, 
some for real, some not for real, who are purporting to offer products and services that may not actually exist. So we always impress upon the need to do your research, to also look and explore a variety of funding options and getting the details right by speaking to experts and people who understand the business, as well as educating yourself around Nigerian property law. It's also worth bearing in mind that property law does very from jurisdiction to jurisdiction. So this is very important. And then finally, really helping our consumers and home buyers see that investing in property is for the future. There's a famous saying that the best time to invest was yesterday, the next best time to, is now. And I will also say actually investing for the future is really where the name of the game is. And we believe that property and real estate in Nigeria does position one for sustainable wealth creation further down the line. Um, so the buyer journey for Mixed Divest is really very simple. Um, selecting your preferred property from our Mixed Divest platform, filling a contact form to indicate interest and getting a sales rep to contact you, receiving and accepting an offer letter, making payment. And as I mentioned, we have different payment plans, receiving your documentation and, and the location upon reaching your, your stated payment milestones, receiving and getting construction updates from our customer experience team, and of course, receiving your keys upon full payment. Um, from a legal perspective, it's very simple and straightforward. Uh, with Mixta Africa, you're looking at your contract of sales and your deed of assignment and deed of sublease. And we welcome questions on legal title and documentation once we get into the queue and a segment. Very quickly, I thought I would just sort of um, highlight some of our, our key developments. Here you see a master plan of the exquisite Lagos New Town. Uh, this is prime real estate uh, that sits on the coastline just over the Atlantic with the Lagos New Town Road that is parallel to the Lakey Expressway. Of course, you can see on here estates that we have developed, Adiva, Beechwood Park, and of course the iconic Lakaway Lakes Golf and Country Estate. Um, what do you get by keying into our developments? This is what you get, uh, proper, fantastic infrastructure. And at this point, I actually should mention that the very last monsoon-like rainfall we had in Nigeria um, continues to test the resilience and sustainability of our communities. And it shows just how much we've invested. Year in, year out, the Lagos new town developments do not experience flooding because we have invested in world-class infrastructure. And I think this is a really important point when you're looking at investing in real estate back home. Of course, access to recreational facilities, depending on which development you key into, the natural environment, which we're very big on. And of course, if you decide to invest in the iconic Lackaway Lakes, access to an 18 hole championship golf course, water sports, a, a spa and wellness center, a fully equipped gym, and a plethora of on-site dining and hospitality and entertainment um, amenities. Um, I'm just going to take you through a few of the new products and existing products that we have. Lackaway Heights is going to be the first luxury high-rise development that we'll have on Lackaway Lakes Golf and Country Estate. Look out for details on this. We're going to be rolling out studio, one bed, two bed, and three bed apartments. And, and one of the really beautiful things about Lackaway Heights is you will really truly have a panoramic view. Um, in this property. So think about the wonderful 18-hole golf course, the fantastic garden views, the man-made and natural water bodies, and just the ability and opportunity to key into an apartment that will at least boast of one, if not two, of those views that I just mentioned. Then we have Farah Park, which is a middle-income product. We've just launched uh, the second phase of Farah Park 2, uh, many of you would have heard of our uh, legacy Farah Park, one of the world-class gated communities along the Lekki Expressway. This is a middle-income product featuring two and three bed apartments, again, with all the requisite amenities and facilities that come with living in a prime gated estate. And of course, the cove, an elegant, luxurious community on Lakaway Lakes, 
itself with a variety of home styles and designs to suit every single taste. Um, this is actually one of our more popular developments. So if you're interested in this one, I would suggest you do not wait another moment after this call. Beetroot Park, I talked about our affordable housing product, uh, a one-stop community again in Lagos New Town that will boast of amenities. And we sold out on phase one. To date, we've sold 588 homes in Beetroot Park one and two. Um, and of course, you have the opportunity, if you don't want a built home, to buy premium plots at Lackaway Lakes um, on the estate and build and design your own home. And here are just a few pictures we thought we would leave you with. This is an aerial shot of parts of Lackaway Lakes Golf and Country Estate. Uh, you can see some of the homes we delivered in Lackaway Lakes more than 10 years ago. Um, and you can see the quality uh, and durability of the infrastructure and the environment. It's actually a really fantastic piece of architecture. There's a Villa Bella here, an aerial shot of the village, another exclusive gated community within Lackaway Lakes Golf and Country Estate, some close-up shots and interior shots of the, the village. Um, here you see the cottages, and I should mention at this juncture that one of the great things and attractions of investing in a home at Lackaway Lakes is that you potentially have the opportunity to put your home on the rental pool when you're not occupying your home. And I think this is a really important point to note uh, if you're in the diaspora contemplating uh, uh, buying and investing in, in Lackaway Lakes and other mixed up property. So these are just some views. And finally, I just wanted to quickly tell you about a new initiative we've rolled out. You know, time and time again, we've had our clients and buyers ask us about reward schemes and ways to get their network to, to key into the opportunities, investment opportunities with Mix Their Wealth. It's not be an executive club. It's not Virgin Miles, it's the Mixta Executive Sales Club. It's an affiliate sales network that provides highly networked individuals with an opportunity to offer value to their network. Uh, you don't have to be a real estate expert to be a part of this network, to be a member of the club. You just need to be open and to have great interpersonal and communication skills. Um, and it's an opportunity to earn commission from selling Mixta's real estate products. But beyond earning commission, we've introduced a point system that allows you to amass points and redeem fantastic rewards. We don't have time to go into all of it now, but if you'd like to hear more about this, of course, please interact with us and my colleagues will be sharing some links in the chat box. So, there ends my presentation. I think our head of sales, Andrea, is going to give a few short remarks and then we'll move straight into the Q&A section. Thank you very much. Thank you, Relake. Uh, good evening, everyone. And thank you for honoring our, pre um, our invitation this evening. Um, it's, it's been good to hear like I say all of those things about our company. It's, it's safe to say that she has actually said everything that I need to say. Um, but um, I'll just add that, um, you know, Mix Africa has been in existence for over two decades now. And successfully, we have delivered over 13,500 units, um, both residential and commercial. And um, as a real estate company, really, we pride ourselves with the ability to deliver solid infrastructure this kind of infrastructure that brings about um, beautiful communities. And um, within Lagos, within Nigeria and outside of Nigeria, we're known for our capacity to deliver from affordable housing units to luxury housing units. And um, most of our real estate offerings in Nigeria are in Lagos. You know, we have over 15 estates um, within Lagos alone. All of our estates are situated on Lake Yepe Expressway. And you know that's the new Lagos, you know today. And then um, outside of Lagos, we have in Portacot, we have a new project coming on in Portacot that should be due for release before the end of this month. In Abuja, also we have another housing development that is due for release um, before the end of this month as well. So it just goes to show you that we have a lot of product for everyone who might be interested in buying into real estate in Nigeria. And um, one thing I can guarantee you is. Um, um, our documentation. We have a global CFO for all of our products um, within Lagos and outside of Lagos. And, you know, this is sort of, this is a document that makes it easy for you to buy into any real estate um, 
um, portfolio in Nigeria. That's the fear with for people outside of Nigeria usually is um, based on, I mean, it's usually towards documentation. You're not sure what kind of documentation you would get. You're not even sure if any documentation exists. Um, but at Mixta, we have a doc, we have the proper documentation that you need for buying into any real estate project. And um, also we have a dedicated sales team that will see you through the process of buying into any of our real estate developments. Um, These salespeople will talk you through and show you all the available products that we have. And um, I also like to add that um, we make um, buying into our products very easy for you. You have the option of paying in full and um, getting some sort of discount for choosing to pay in full. You have an option of paying over time, depending on the product you choose to buy into. You can do the 12 month payment plan, 18 month payment plan, subject to um, the products that you're buying into, like I said. And um, if, you know, we don't charge any interest, uh, especially when you, you know, stay through to the payment plan that we give you. You know, so um, we're available to attend to all your questions. We know you have a lot of questions and we may not be able to take everything. Now you could check our website, www.mixedafrica.com. You'll find a lot of information about us. And we're also going to be posting an email address that you can send um, your questions to in case you, you, know, you want to know more about our product. So um, thank you once again for, you know, making our time out of your busy schedule to, to listen to our presentation today. Thank you, Rolake and Tadi, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Wolake and um, Andrea, for the um, fantastic presentation. Um, so moving forward, like I mentioned, we'll be going into a session of Q&A. And like I said, I'll just repeat the protocol again. If you have any questions pertaining to what you've heard or any other thing you'd like to know more about, please just type it um, via and um, type it and um, send it through the Q&A channel at the bottom of the screen. Um, so we already have some questions here, um, and what I'll be doing is that I'll be directing the questions to um, a member of the management team to answer. Okay, so the first question I have here is from Sylvester. Um, I think I can answer this one. Will, will you be sending us a link to this recording for sharing with our family and friends? Yes, we will. Uh, it will be sent via email, and we will be uploading it on um, our social media uh, once the session is over. So please just look out for it. Thank you for that. And um, there's still two other questions from Sylvester. Is the coastal or ocean frontal road from the island to Ibejuleki axis really going to be a reality? Um, I would give this over, pass this over to Valake or DA to answer. I think Shade is there. Oh, maybe Shade is. Yes, I am. Good evening, okay. everybody. Um, yeah, hi. Good evening, everybody. And thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, yes, I can say that the Coastal Road um, is an initiative that the Lagos State Government um, has, uh, you know, had um, as part of their um, development activities um, on that um, Ibejuleki access. Um, it does exist for a part of the way, and I do, and we do believe um, that the Lagos State Government does have plans, you know, to continue. Um, to, to complete this road as an alternative route. Um, because right now, the only um, well-developed um, route from the Lagos Island all the way to Ekbe is on the axis on, you know, the Lagos, um, Victoria Island, Lekki, um, Feju, Ekbe um, Expressway that we all know. Um, but um, yes, um, the, the, the coastal road um, is intended by the Lagos State Government as the, an alternative route um, to that area. And we do believe that um, the will in due course um, sort it out. Okay, thank you very much for that, Mrs. Hughes. Um, so another question from Sylvester. Any plans to invest in alternative transportation along the Lekki Expressway, such as light train or tram? Lots of interest to investors here. Um, I'll pass this over to um, this, uh, Mr. Deji Ali to answer. Uh, well, I, I think it's a question that's better directed at uh, the government. Um, I, we do know that there are various plans uh, that the Lagos State government um, has considered and continue to consider. Um, what we know is that they have started an extensive uh, work 
on the rehabilitation of the road. Uh, there have been talks about uh, light rail. Uh, it's by no means clear when that will be done. Uh, but I think uh, we, we, we also share the sentiments that this is something that is greatly needed. Uh, it's possible that if this is done, it will be done under a PPP type arrangement, uh, but it's not very clear at this point in time. Okay, thank you for that, um, Mr. DG Ali. Um, so we'll be going to the next question um, from Olajide. He says, could you please share or discuss the prices of your products? And I think there's a similar question to that below. How do we get details of pricing for different products and payment plan? Um, so I'll just answer that. Um, you can get that via our website. So I'll be pasting a link to our website um, on there, you can um, further uh, furnish yourself with details of our different products, as well as get access to the different prices and payment plans for the different products we have available. Thanks, Ade. Or, or the, the person asking can also send an email to sales underscore diaspora at mixedafrica.com. Um, I think pasted there so the person can please send us an email and reach out to him or her immediately yes yes so yeah so i'll be putting i'll be putting both pasting both both information on the comment section okay so there's another question from okay it says what's the current security situation in communities surrounding Lakaway? i'll be handing this over to uh, mr Uguchuku Undubuisi, who is the head of legal and corporate services at Mixed Africa. Hello, good evening, everyone. I'm started for the question. Um, I would say that um, there's a relative peace between um, the communities, between um, uh, the communities, between the communities there and um, the lack of a community, the uh, Gulf estate community and all estates we have around there. Um, we have members of the community, we positively engage them, and we have a couple of um, corporate social responsibility projects that we've done. We've um, renovated schools, we've um, engaged with health centers in the area. So um, the communities are quite happy with us, and um, we continue to partner with them to continue to be good neighbors. Okay, thank you for that, um, um, Ugo. Um, so, okay, I'll be moving on. So there's some more questions. Um, this is from Omo, Omo Bola. How do you address FX risk and protect potential investors from fluctuations? So I'll hand this over to um, Rola Kier to answer. Maybe I can take that question. Okay. Okay, hi, dear. I'll take that question at the end. Okay. Okay. So that, that'll be answered at the end. Um, okay. So another question. Raquel mentioned rental pool. How does rental pool work? Um, Raquel, please. Okay. Hi. Yeah. Thanks for that question, Shagun. So the, the rental pool is specific to uh, Lackaway Lakes uh, um, Golf and Country Estate. So if should you choose to buy or purchase a property on Lackaway Lakes, there is a possibility to have your home added to the hospitality rental pool. So one of the ways we structured the Lackaway Lakes estate is that we have a hospitality business, uh, Lackaway Lakes Hospitality Limited. And what this gives um, homeowners the opportunity to do is, especially for those who've invested in property as investors, not owner occupiers, you can essentially, if you meet our criteria, and the criteria is really in ensuring that you furnish and set your home to a standard that is acceptable for our hospitality stand, uh, for our hospitality requirements. You then put your home on that rental pool under an arrangement. And of course, there's an agreement between yourself and ourselves um, on that, which also includes what we call a management fee. Um, if you want more details on that, you can also actually email us at sales underscore diaspora at mixedafrica.com and we'll let you know all the requirements. Um, but usually this comes after 
you have bought a home and invested in a home, uh, but we'd be happy to offer you a bit more information on the hospitality business. I should also mention that with the hospitality business, we've seen particularly since COVID, uh, a real pickup in demand from short uh, people who want to do staycation. So due to the restrictions on international travel, uh, the domestic tourism industry has actually boomed locally. So a lot more people are wanting to go away and stay within Nigeria. And Lakaway Lakes actually offers an idyllic getaway option for those sorts of travelers. So really, it's think of it as creating a small political rental economy for homeowners on the estate, in, in a gated estate. And I think this is one of the most attractive parts of owning home in, in Lakaway. There's nowhere else like it in Lagos, frankly, in West mm -hmm. Africa, you'd be hard pressed to find. Um, so the rental opportunity is, is really very significant. And at the point of purchase, actually, we can support you in helping you figure out what potentially could be uh, rental yield estimates on an annual basis. Obviously, a lot of this will be subject to other variables, but I think it offers a really strong value proposition insofar as uh, an investment property on Lakaway is concerned. Okay, thank you very much for that. Um, okay. um, so another question here is, is there any plans to have projects on the mainland of, on the mainland of Lagos or the neighboring S, or the neighboring states, I'd hand this over to pass this on to Mrs. Hughes to answer. Yeah, thanks, Tade. Um, the answer to that is yes. Um, we are looking at opportunities on the mainland, on the Lagos mainland, and we do. Uh, we are actually in um, a couple of other states. We've done a development in Edo State, um, and we're looking to you know um, a wider geographical reach in Nigeria. Thanks. Okay, thank you for that, Mrs. Hughes. Oh, um, sorry, Tade. I forgot to mention Abuja. Sorry. Um, we have a project also in Abuja, and we will be launching that um, later this month. So, um, yes, we do have um, plans to, to spread outside of Lagos. Yes, thank you for that. Okay, another question here is, do you have a mortgage system for us in the diaspora? I would hand this, pass this on to Rolake to answer. Okay, thank you for, for that question, Ikena. Um, one of the things we're doing with the diaspora, as you can imagine, because of sort of cross-border cross uh, legal and regulatory issues, different financial service providers have their own policies and structures. Um, so we don't have a standard mortgage for diaspora, but individual financial institutions who we're partnering with will have products that can support uh, diaspora purchases of property back home. As you know, with mo most mortgage uh, structures, you're, you technically generally have can access a mortgage in the country where you earn a, a, a salary, which will be domiciled with a mortgage provider. So some of those issues sometimes may, may, may mitigate against ability to access mortgages overseas for local purchases. However, more and more Nigerian banks are creating specific products that cater to the needs of the diaspora community. Um, so that's something we're looking at. We're well aware, uh, I personally know two financial service providers who do offer mortgages for diaspora buyers. Um, so please don't let that stop you from engaging with us. There are other funding options as well on the table and we'd be happy to engage and point you in the right direction. Thank you for that, Okay. Um, moving on, we have a question from Teju. Um, if I buy, an empty plot, am I restricted in terms of the structure that I can build on the plot? I'll, have, I'll pass this on to uh, Mr. Ugo to answer. Thank you, Tabi. Um, with respect to the kind of restrictions that you have, we have um, house types, agreed house types in your documentation. Prior to when you buy the property, we have designs and approved designs that you must um, clear off. So it's quite clear from the beginning what you are buying into, and there won't be um, surprises along the way. Maybe I can add a bit um, onto what uh, my colleague Google has said. Um, you know, we do have various um, we do have various properties in different areas. Um, some properties, um, such as uh, properties in Lakawe, for instance. Um, there are building very there are um, very exacting um, building guidelines and regulations and um, these regulations are obviously made um, so that to preserve the value the you know the value 
of the estate as, as you know, so that we don't um, have people doing, you know, doing all kinds of things that will um, that will um, erode the value. Um, we have um, other kinds of, uh, we have plots of land um, that are unserviced. Um, we have plots of land that are serviced um, and each different um, property that we have, you know, uh, basically has its own different uh, guidelines and regulations to the use of it. Um, so that, that it's not quite sort of one, one, one rule fits all. It depends on which of our properties you buy into and then um, you will be guided, you know, as to what um, is allowed and what is disallowed. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for that, for those answers. So moving on, we have a question um, here. It says, what is the commitment of Mixed Africa relating to providing infrastructure for land or property owners in your estate? So I'll pass this on to um, Mrs. Hughes to answer. Sorry, Tade, um, I, I lost connection for just that second. Could you just um, take that again, please? Okay. Um, so it says, what is the commitment of Mixta Africa relating to providing infrastructure for land or property owners in your estate? Oh, great. Uh, thank you very much. Again, um, similar to the um, answer I gave, or I added to Lugo's um, answer just before this, um, it depends on which of our properties that you buy into. Um, we have you know, highly serviced properties, um, fully serviced properties. Uh, and, um, you know, we, in, in that case, we provide civil infrastructure drainage, we provide water, uh, treated water, we provide electricity. Um, we try to provide 24 hour power, but, um, uh, and, and I think we, 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 we do manage to do that um, to a large extent, um, but it's not so easy here. We also have water treatment um, plants um, and that's for our fully serviced um, plots, uh, infrastructure. Um, sorry, our, fully, our properties that are, have full service. We have um, some properties that are partially serviced, um, and that for those uh, properties, it involves it includes everything I've said um, before, but excludes um, well, uh, sewage treatment. And then we have the non-service plots, um, in which all we do is provide the main access way, um, and the property owners are more or less. Um, have to um, sort every other kind of infrastructure out. So again, it depends on which of our properties um, you, you buy into. Uh, we have properties, you know, pretty much across all segments. Um, so there's something for everyone with us. Yes, thank you for that, Mrs. Hughes. So the next question, um, please give some details on the finance options, length, deposit amount, etc. A few examples will be useful to gauge our options. So I'll just pass this on quickly to Andrea. All right, Daddy, thank you. Uh, thank you for that question. So depending on the product you're, uh, you're trying to buy into, um, some products allow you to pay 50% initial deposits. Some give you um, the opportunity to do 20% or 25% initial deposit. Also, depending on the product, um, you can spread your payment for 12 months or 18 months or even six months, depending on what you're buying into. So that would be maybe 10% of the, I mean, 25% of the total cost of the property you're buying into or 50% of the total cost of the property you're buying into. So it just all depends on um, what you're keying into at the time. Yes, thank you. And in addition to that, um, please just, um, if you want to make any further inquiries, um, please feel free to send an email to the sales underscore diaspora mixedafrica.com for more inquiries and um, you'll be attending to in good time. Um, so the next question, are there off-plan sales or just completed properties for investors? I'll pass this on to Rolake. Um, we we mostly actually do off-plan sales. Um, of course, with any real estate market, there's always a thriving secondary market, um, and we can point you in the right direction from that. Uh, we also have properties that you can buy at different delivery uh, stages, and delivery stages mean you can buy a property as a shell finish or a semi-finished or hybrid finish. Um, but mixed uh, 
because of the long track head road we have, we've successfully sustained and built this business on off plan sales because our customers trust us and they trust us to deliver. So it really just depends. Uh, if they're completed projects, we, we don't have inventory just lying around <laughs> Uh, completed without being sold. So if there is property available that is sort of empty on the estate, it means that it's owned by somebody who has bought it and they're either putting on the rent or pulling lack away or they plan other purposes of it, but most of it is off plan. However, for the purposes of visualization, you will see developments under construction on the estate all the time. Um, so it's, it's, it's mostly off plan under construction uh, completed units have usually been sold. Yeah, thank you for that. So um, because of time, we have two more questions here. Um, I'll be um, reading very quickly. Um, do you have, do you say you have a project in Edo State? Then where in Edo State? Can I get more information? I'll pass that on to uh, Mrs. Hughes to answer. Thanks, Tade. Um, yes, about the Edo State uh, project. Um, on, shall I say, uh, fortunately, unfortunately, we have come to the end of our phase of our um, JV uh, with the Edo State Government, but the project still does exist, and I'm sure we can give you, I mean, what I mean to say about that is that our sale, the, the portion that we are JVing with the government has closed, um, but I'm sure we can give you, our, our sales team um, can give you more information about how you can contact um, the, the Edo State, our partners um, who are continuing with the project. Okay, thank you for that, Mrs. Hughes. And then the final question here um, states, can I bring in my pets to the estate? If it's a yes, what category of pets are accepted in Lakowe in, in particular? Um, I think I'll pass that on to Mrs. Hughes to answer. Okay, hmm, interesting question. Okay, so um, what can I say? Um, Lakoa Lakes is an estate that doesn't have, um, it's, you know, each property is, it doesn't have a fence around it. Um, so what can I say? Um, uh, it's very important for us um, to, to, um, to foster a sort of a, a happy sort of residential kind of situation. Um, as we know, a lot of people, you know, aren't, I mean, are pretty much averse to, 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 to certain kinds of pets. So I would, um, we have um, estate guidelines. Um, there's more that we have, you know, more details in our estate guidelines, but I would just say that um, it's very important um, to us um, to make sure that all our residents are happy. And um, depending what kind of pet you have, I mean, if it's a goldfish, that's fine, you know. Um, but if it's a huge, you know, Doberman dog, you know, that's very kind of aggressive and the rest of it, um, it wouldn't, it's not a kind, the sort of pets that we would want um, bounding around the estate because that would, you know, be disruptive to other people. So I think, um, I think um, there's more information in our estate guideline, but I would just say that generally speaking, we tend to place the premium, you know, on, um, you know, on, 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 on sort of a convival, um, you know, residential feel for everybody. Um, so it's um, it's something that we, you know, that it depends on the pets, basically. Um, if it's a housebound pet, perhaps, um, but definitely not a pet that would, um, you know, be offensive or be scary or be, you know, disruptive uh, to your neighbor or anybody else. Okay, thank you very much for that, uh, Mrs. Hughes. And like I said, because of time, that brings us to the end of the Q&A session. Um, if there are any further more, if there are any uh, more questions, um, please, um, I mean, um, after the presentation by our CEO, would we'll try to answer that, or will be, uh, you can send an email to the email, the official diaspora email address, which is sales underscore diaspora at mixedafrica.com for more inquiries. So I'll be passing over to, uh, I'll be handing over to the CEO of Mixed Africa, Mr. DJ Ali, to give um, some final remarks. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Tade, and uh, good evening to everyone. And uh, we, we really thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. Um, <clears throat> I, I'll just say a few things in closing today's session. Uh, and I think one important thing that uh, Rolake shared with us earlier is the need to make an emotional connection. But I would also be quick to add that when you do so, um, you shouldn't necessarily uh, for emotional reasons, consider real estate unless there's a rational basis for you to do so. And that brings me to 
what tends to occupy the minds of most, most of you uh, in diaspora. Um, and I think Mobala asked a question, which is quite relevant. Um, uh, what we're often concerned about is the effect of devaluation of the currency, uh, the high rates of inflation, which are important factors that tend to erode the value of investments, whether it's uh, stocks, real estate, or, or what again. So I think it's a very legitimate concern. Uh, and that question, uh, I had the opportunity of sharing my a personal experience uh, with, with, during the session yesterday. I'm going to use that uh, same example to, to address the uh, concern that uh, Mobile I expressed. Now, I, in my career, I've had the opportunity of uh, trading many asset classes. Um, and and I, 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 I would still say that uh, real estate is one of the most resilient asset classes that you can consider, especially when it comes to its effect on um, infl inflation and, and, and uh, the valuation of the currency. And the example I used yesterday was, um, I, I told the story about uh, not too long ago, uh, in, you know, I was having a discussion with my father, who is, a, who is an accountant and tends to keep all documents relating to everything that is done going back several decades, you know. Um, and in discussing with him, he brought out a marketing uh, brochure, uh, which was the base upon which he made an acquisition of a home on Adena Rogosa in Surulere uh, in 1966 or so. Um, the house which you see on that screen is representative of what um, was his first acquisition of real estate. And for, for many of you that are too young to know, uh, back then, uh, the, the currency that uh, was used in Nigeria was also pound sterling. Uh, so when you say 3,750 pounds, it's exactly uh, the, the currency that you're familiar with already in the UK. Uh, so that acquisition was made in 1966 uh, for a total sum of 3,750 pounds. So I'll, I'll, I'll put that uh, aside for one second and ask uh, Sam, could you just go on to the next uh, slide? Could you, could you scroll down, please? Keep going, please. You know, I, I, I use this example because, can you keep going down, please? I use this example because it's relatable. It's one thing to say that real estate is good, it's quite another thing to be able to show and provide evidence that it is so. So um, this is a site which you can all go and check. Uh, feel free to do so. Uh, just a prop market value of uh, properties on Adeno Rokosai in Surulere, Lagos. That same house that I showed you is currently in the market for about between 125 million Naira and 170 million, depending on the state. Of, of the property itself. Now, if you convert that 130 million Naira to sterling, to, to pounds, in today's unfavorable uh, market, uh, at about 790 uh, Naira to, to one pound, uh, you get about 167,000 pounds. So essentially that property over the years has moved from about 3,750 so about 167,000 pounds. But just consider that in that period, in that period, the currency has devalued by 99.9%. .9%. You know inflation has been what it is. We've gone through a civil war. We've gone through economic dislocation. We've gone through economic meltdown. Um, you know, just mention it. Uh, whatever bad has happened in that same economy that you had this kind of uh, performance. Uh, if you go on to the next slide, uh, because I'll come back to this now, but just picture that, that we, we moved to. What we also did was to go back and say, well, let's even look at how the UK property market has performed in the last 60 years or so, uh, focusing on uh, the top right hand um, shot that you have there. Can you align that well? So that starts in 1967. Roughly, that starting point is about 50,000 pounds. And if we trace it up all the way, um, it gets to, I think, about 190,000 pounds or so a few, a few years ago, um, which represents 
an increase of about 3,700%. When you go back to the Lagos example that I shared with you earlier on, of course, these are averages. Many properties would have done better and, and worse. That movement from 3,750 pounds to about 167,000 pounds is the equivalent of 4,300%. So what it tells you is that even if Lagos is not the best performing market, in this case, um, it shows that it's outperformed the UK housing average over that same period, uh, but it's still a respectable performance. And it means that it holds value. And, and therefore, as a rational investor, um, there's every reason to consider this sort of investment. Of course, the problem with us, um, and many of us do this, is that we only see the negative side of, of, of Nigeria. And if, if you have a habit of, of closing the window of opportunity anytime it appears, uh, then you, you, you essentially pull down the shade and you miss out on those opportunities. So we think there's a very compelling reason uh, for, 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 for people like yourselves to consider uh, making an investment in real estate uh, in Nigeria. Uh, we've seen this in all countries where we operate, uh, the same factors, the same arguments are, are applicable. And for us, uh, for this session, three key questions you need to ask. Why real estate? I, I think uh, we've provided enough evidence. Why Lagos? Lagos for us is very important, even though we operate in other parts of, uh, of Nigeria, but we think Lagos is the most important market for us. Uh, if truly we have a population of 200 million people, it means 10% of our population resides in Lagos. Uh, if you look at contribution to uh, GDP, uh, economic spend, Lagos accounts for a significant uh, number. But bear in mind that in terms of land mass, Lagos is just less than 0.5% of the entire land mass of Nigeria. So land is of, uh, has that scarcity value, and that's what we've seen. Uh, Mixta has positioned itself as a large land uh, landowner in Lagos, and that's why we're building this new neighborhood. Uh, it's not just about building a block of 50 apartments or 20 apartments, it's about building a new neighborhood where uh, you have the infrastructure that you don't see in many parts of Lagos, you can have a lifestyle that is uh, not available in other parts of the, of the city. Uh, and we think this is what makes uh, uh, the Lagos New Town development unique. We've been able to bring together various income groups from low all the way to the affluent uh, segments of, of the society. Uh, because we think, we believe that everybody should live together in one, uh, in one uh, common neighborhood. Now, of course, if you tell me to answer the question, why mix it? As with any developer, I'll give you all the positive things, but you can do your due diligence on Mixer itself. Uh, as Rolaka said, uh, we've executed real estate projects in eight countries. Our single largest development to date is in Morocco, where we have almost 6,000 homes with a school, clinic, police post, and all that. Uh, and, and if you consider, if we can do that in many other countries, uh, for us, Nigeria is really the big price for us. And that's why, you know, we're so committed to this Lagos new town. Um, I think I'll rest uh, my, uh, my skill step before I say too much, but I think the, 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 the series of activities coming up uh, in the next uh, few days or so, that the Royal Academy will touch on that and, uh, and, and then close there from. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, thank you very much, DA. Um, thanks to the team as well for the coordination support. Um, so as DA mentioned, we have a series of activities coming up in the UK uh, from next week. Um, if you'd like to have discussions with us, please reach out. Um, my, the team on the call will also put um, my individual email address in addition to the sales underscore diaspora email address, if you'd like to reach out. We have an exclusive dinner on Tuesday evening and Saturday evening for those uh, interested in joining the Executive Sales Club, as well as for Mix and ARM alumni. Then we have an event on Thursday evening at the Signature Art Gallery 
in London, uh, I believe that's in Knightsbridge, uh, with our partner CESO Global Property Marketplace. Uh, please come along, we'll be showcasing more of our mixed uh, homes. And then we're at the Excel Center on Friday and Saturday at the Property Investor Show exhibition, where I'll also be giving a presentation and you have the opportunity to come and, and look at some VR tours of our property. Um, I already mentioned the other exclusive dinner on Saturday and then the grand finale Sunday 17th October where we have the reimagining Nigerian business forum on infrastructure, the future of infrastructure technology and leadership in Nigeria, and then to round it off all in the evening an Africa cultural showcase at altitude uh, at 4pm. So that's it. Uh, please engage with us sales underscore diaspora at mixed Africa or this number on the screen, 07801293506. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, if you'd like to log off now, please do so. If you want to keep chatting in the chat, we are, we're still here for another 10 minutes, but this is the end of the formal segment of this evening's webinar. We hope to see you next week in one form or the other. Thank you. Um, Andrew, you can see the comments on mail delivery failure. Do you want to look into that? Hi, Sylvester. Hi, Hi. Hi. Sam is not 